ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Friends, in the last lecture, we looked at Weiss's Prater criterion for deciding from the experimental information whether the reaction is internal diffusion controlled or not. So, in this lecture, we look at what is the reason why Weiss's Prater scheme works and what are the limitations of the scheme and what is the correction for the same. So, the Weiss's Prater criteria. Weiss's Prater criterion is basically uses a parameter called CWP, which is equal to the internal effectiveness factor multiplied by the uh, Thiele modulus square of uh, phi square, and that is equal to the R observed, the observed reaction rate multiplied by the density of the catalyst multiplied by the square of the length scale of the pellet that is being used divided by the diffusivity into the corresponding concentration of the species at the surface of the catalyst. So, if this is less than 1 then this suggests that there is no internal diffusional limitations. The reaction is not limited by the internal diffusion. So, now the question is what is the validity of this criteria, when does it work, does it work for all, uh, all reactions and all catalytic reactions. So, in order to understand this let us look at why the Weiss Prater criteria works and why is it being, why is it the correct criteria in order to estimate whether the diffusion limitations are present. So, in order to establish that let us look at the classical plot of Thiele modulus versus the internal effectiveness factor eta. So, now if it is a first order reaction, if it is a 0 order reaction then this is for the 0 order reaction, 0th order reaction. Now, if it is a first order reaction the curve looks like this and if it is a second order reaction the curve looks like this and so on. So, this is the first order reaction, this is for the second order reaction and you can now look at other other n, n order p, nth order reaction. So, so the, so the from this graph one can uh, decipher that there is no internal diffusion limitations. There is no internal diffusional limitations if when the internal effectiveness factor is approximately equal to 1. So, the effectiveness factor here starts at 1. So, it is approximately when it is approximately equal to 1 then it means that there is no internal diffusional limitations. Now, from the graph one can easily decipher that when eta is approximately equal to 1 or uh, slightly less than 1 then the Thiele modulus phi is, is less than 1. So, therefore, clearly eta times phi square should be less than 1. So, which is the uh, which is the Weiss Prater parameter. So, the Weiss Prater, Prater parameter. So, this is basically the Weiss Prater criterion. So, therefore, as long as the eta phi relationship behaves the way as it is depicted in this picture, the Weiss Prater criterion would usually work. And in fact, the the eta versus phi curve it, it looks like this only for uh, typically for an nth order reaction any n for nth order reaction. If it is not an nth order reaction for example, if there is adsorption of a species or product inhibition or if it is a non isothermal then the eta versus phi can be different from what is depicted in this picture here does not mean that it will not follow this picture, but if it approximately follows an nth order reaction then this is the kind of profile that one would get. Now, if suppose if it is not 
a simple nth order reaction then it is possible that the eta versus phi graph will not look like this and therefore this condition of eta phi square less than 1 is not always valid according to the definition that is given by Weissblatter criterion that is the Weissblatter parameter the Weissblatter parameter C CWP equal to minus RA observed reaction rate into the density of the catalyst into square of the length scale divided by the diffusivity into CAS. So, this being less than 1 is not always valid if the uh, Thiele modulus and the internal effectiveness graph does not look like the way we just depicted. What have, let us look at what happens if there is a reaction which does not necessarily follow uh, such a effectiveness factor Thiele model relationship. Uh, one particular example is the reaction of carbon when it reacts with the carbon dioxide it leaves out 2, mol two moles of carbon monoxide. So, suppose I represent this as B plus A giving 2 D. So, that is the reaction. So, if I say B species B is carbon, species A is CO2 gas and species D is uh, carbon monoxide. So, at 1000 Kelvin which is where the reaction is conducted, Austin and Walker in 1963 measured the rate of uh, reaction rate and other parameters. So, the reaction rate, the observed reaction rate multiplied by the density of the catalyst was found to be 4.67 into 10 power minus 9 moles per centimeter cube second. So, that was the reaction rate that was observed and the diffusivity of species A, effective diffusivity of species A is about 1.1 centimeter square per second and the effective radius, radius of the particle pellet that was used is 0 0.7 centimeters. So, this information is basically measured by the group of Austin and Walker in 1963. So, the data was measured by these two co-workers in 1963 and the uh, uh, surface concentration of the species was uh, measured to be 1.22 into 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per centimeter cube. So, now let us calculate the Weissbrater parameter from this expression and then see whether the internal diffusional limitations exist or not. So, if I calculate the Weissbrater parameter, so CWP which is basically the minus R A observed that is the observed reaction rate multiplied by the density of the catalyst into R square divided by the density effective diffusivity of the species multiplied by CAS that turns out to be about 1.88 into 10 power minus 3 which is significantly smaller than 1. Now, this would mean that this particular reaction does not have a diffusional limitation. So, this suggests that suggests no diffusional limitation that means that the overall reaction is not controlled by the internal diffusional limitations. So, which means that it suggests that there is no internal diffusional limitations for this particular reaction carbon and the carbon dioxide heterogeneous reaction it leads to two molecules of uh, carbon monoxide. However, after the reaction was conducted the same researchers they actually cut open the they open the catalyst they cut open the catalyst and measured looked at the carbon consumption profile they measured the carbon consumption profile in the catalyst and once it was measured, it suggested the profile actually suggested that there was strong internal diffusional limitations. It suggested that the reaction was strongly limited by the internal diffusion and, and that shows that the Weissbrater criterion does not
does not work for this reaction. This reaction where the carbon reacts with carbon dioxide to form two molecules of carbon monoxide. In this particular case, the the uh, Weissprater criterion does not work. It does not predict correctly the presence of the internal diffusional limitations. So the question is, what is the uh, so because it does not predict, one needs to find out what is the corrective measure for this and what is the correct criteria what is the correct generalized criteria in order to estimate from the experimental observation whether the external internal diffusional limitations are present or not for a given heterogeneous catalytic reaction. So, so clearly there is a need for a, a different framework different framework. Why, why do we need a different framework for this reaction? Because when we look at the mechanism of this particular reaction, when you, look, when you go deep into the mechanism and you try to understand the mechanism of this particular reaction, it was observed that the carbon monoxide which is a product, it strongly adsorbs onto the catalyst side and then it inhibits the reaction. So clearly this uh, mechanism suggests that the mechanism behind this heterogeneous catalytic reaction, it suggests that the carbon monoxide adsorbs adsorbs onto the catalyst sites. So, it adsorbs onto the catalyst sites and therefore, the reaction is strongly inhibited. which means that it is not going to follow the classical nth order reaction. The re catalytic reaction is not the, the rate law is not an nth order reaction, does not have an, an nth order dependence on the concentration of the species because the product is now adsorbing on to the catalyst sites and it is strongly inhibiting the reaction. So, therefore, there is a, a limitation that is present here. So now the question is if I look at the now if I look at the uh, Thiele modulus effectiveness factor graph in general and if it goes from 0.1 to 10 and this is 1 here and for an nth order reaction first order second order etc 0th order first order second order the eta versus phi graph it looks like this. On the other hand, for other types of rate loss, for example, adsorption rate law, langmuir hinshel wood or LED deal type of uh, mechanisms and for exothermic reactions, the effectiveness Thiele modulus graph can actually look like this. So, therefore, when eta is equal to 1, when eta is approximate, when, when, when the Thiele modulus is very small, it does not necessarily mean that the effectiveness factor is actually uh, almost equal to 1. So, as a result, the Weissprater criterion which hinges on the fact that when uh, for a certain type of reactions, the effectiveness factor is almost equal to 1, the Thiele modulus is less than 1. So, that factor does not work for the situations where the rate law uh, depends upon or rate law mechanism or rate law follows the langmuir hinshel wood type or the Eli riedel type. That is when there is an adsorption, product adsorption or adsorption of the species. So, so heterogeneous reactions, several heterogeneous reactions, they actually follow the langmuir hinshel wood type kinetics. langmuir hinshel wood type kinetics or Eli Riedel type kinetics, which basically uses the adsorption isotherm, which is adsorption isotherm is now incorporated into the rate law. So, therefore, in these cases, the WP criteria and the Weiss Prater criterion does not work. So now we need to find out what is the generalized criteria which works for all types of rate loss. So, so the exercise is now to find out what is this generalized criteria. what is this generalized criteria? So, suppose we define capital phi 
as eta into phi square and this is now very similar to that of the y spreader criterion this is very similar to similar to cwp that's the y scatter parameter now the in order to come up with a generalized criterion we need to define a generalized we need to find out what is the generalized effectiveness factor what's the general definition of the effectiveness factor and what is the generalized definition of the Thiele modulus so the generalized definition for the internal effectiveness factor is basically given by ra prime observed that's the observed reaction rate divided by the corresponding reaction rate on the at the surface of the catalyst. On the other hand the generalized Thiele modulus can actually be is defined as the length scale whatever is the radius of the pellet effective radius of the pellet into minus R A s that is the reaction rate at the surface concentration multiplied by the density of the catalyst divided by square root of 2 into integral the equilibrium concentration of the species at the center of the catalyst if the catalyst was of infinite size integral from C A to C A S where C A S is the concentration of the surface into the effective diffusivity of the species D E A into minus R A into rho C into D C A that to the power of minus 1 by 2. So, that is the uh, generalized Thiele modulus and it should be noted here that C A is the concentration of species at R equal to 0 uh, that is at the center of the catalyst pellet if the pellet is of infinite size. If the pellet is of infinite size. Now, this quantity C A equilibrium is actually going to be 0 if it is a, it's a, a non reversible reaction that is it is a forward or a back one of one side reaction then the C A equilibrium here would actually take a value of 0. So, if it is a, a non reversible reaction then because it is an infinite size pellet then the amount of time that it takes for the species to actually diffuse into the pellet and go all the way to the center will be infinite time and therefore, the concentration of the species at the center of the pellet can be assumed to be 0 if it is a, a non reversible reaction. Now, if it is a reversible reaction then it will be an equilibrium concentration. So, now if I look at this expression if I plug in the generalized effectiveness factor in the generalized Thiele modulus expression into this uh, modified or new generalized criterion will be eta phi square and that should be equal to minus R A that is the observed rate divided by at the surface uh, at this uh, rate at the, at the surface concentration multiplied by R square into minus R A S square into rho C square divided by 2 times integral C A equilibrium that is the equilibrium concentration at the center into C A S into the effective diffusivity of that species into minus R A into rho C into D C into D C A. So, that is the expression for the modified or generalized criterion for uh, deciding whether the internal diffusion is going to exist or not internal diffusional limitation is going to exist or not. So, suppose if this quantity so, so now we can rewrite this as by cancelling some of these terms. So, you can cancel this term with the square and in this case assume that the cat density of the catalyst does not change then we can cancel off these and so we can rewrite this as the observed rate into r square that is the square of the length scale that is the rate evaluated at the surface concentration multiplied by the density divided by 2 times integral C A equilibrium that is the equilibrium concentration of the species at the center of the pellet if the pellet is infinitely large and the integral goes from equilibrium concentration to the at the at r equal to 0 to the surface concentration multiplied by the corresponding diffusivity into the reaction rate into D C A. So, now the modified criterion is that if this quantity phi is less than 1 then there is no internal diffusional limitations.
in fact this quantity here this generalized modulus here if we plug in the exp rate expression for an nth order reaction it actually reduces to the weiss prater criterion. So, therefore, this is a generalized model which also includes the weiss prater criterion of uh, desire or weiss prater criterion which is used for deciding whether the internal diffusional limitation is present or absent based on the experimental uh, data. Now, let us look at the specific example we had uh, initiated today that is the reaction of C plus CO2 giving 2 times CO. So, let us look at what happens, what is the act, whether the diffusional limitation is actually predicted by the by the modified or generalized criterion. So, remember that the weiss prater criterion did not predict the presence of the internal diffusional limitations. However, by cutting open the catalyst, the experimental evidence uh, by looking at the profile of the carbon content suggests that the, the diffusional limitations was strongly present and it strongly inhibited the reaction. So, let us now plug in that uh, pl plug in the rate law into the generalized modulus and look at whether the internal diffusional limitations was present or absent. So, the, so the reaction scheme is B plus A giving 2 times D. So, B is the species B is the carbon and A is CO2 and D is the product uh, carbon monoxide. So, the reaction rate law by looking at the detailed uh, mechanisms that is involved in the uh, heterogeneous catalytic reaction has been found to be K into C A divided by 1 plus K 2 into C D that is the adsorption constant for adsorption equilibrium constant for uh, carbon monoxide plus K 3 into C A this is the adsorption constant correspondingly for the uh, carbon dioxide. And so, if we assume assume that the diffusivity effective diffusivity of species A is equal to the effective diffusivity of species D and by assuming uh, assuming that it is a equimolar counter diffusion system. And if we also assume that the concentration of the product species which is carbon monoxide at the surface is approximately 0. Now, this is valid because the experiment suggests that there is a strong adsorption of the product onto the catalyst side. So, therefore, uh, we can expect that the amount of carbon monoxide which has actually left the catalyst and the amount that is present on the surface is negligible. So, therefore, we can assume that the concentration of D s on the surface is approximately equal to 0. So, therefore, using these assumptions the rate law can now be rewritten as K into C A divided by 1 plus 2 K 2 C A s that is the concentration of carbon dioxide at the surface of the catalyst plus K 3 which is the equilibrium constant for the adsorption of C O 2 minus 2 times K 2 that is the equilibrium constant for adsorption of carbon monoxide product carbon monoxide onto the surface of the catalyst multiplied by the concentration of the uh, species C A. So, now integrating the expression for the generalized modulus we will find that phi capital phi which is the generalized modulus generalized uh, criterion that is equal to internal effectiveness factor multiplied by phi square. Now, because it is a it is not a reversible reaction we can assume that C A equilibrium is equal to 0. So, if we assume that C A equilibrium that is the concentration of the species that is carbon dioxide at the center of the pellet if the pellet was infinitely long if that is approximately equal to 0 because it is a, a non reversible reaction and therefore, phi is equal to minus R A prime the observed reaction rate multiplied by R square into rho C evaluated at the surface divided by 2 times integral 0 to C A s that is the integral into the diffusivity of species D E A into minus R A prime into D C. So, now plug in we can plug in the rate expression here remember that the rate expression is given by the K times C A divided by 1 plus 2 times K 3 into uh, K 2 into C A plus K 3 minus 2 K 2 into C A. So, the first one is the uh, product of 1 plus 2 K 3. So, the R A is given by minus R A prime is given by K into C A divided by 1 plus 2 K 3 
2 1 plus 2 k 2 into C A S plus k 3 minus 2 k 2 into C A. So, that is the reaction rate. So, now if we can that is the rate law for the catalytic reaction. Now, plug in this rate law. So, we can plug in this rate law into this expression here and then we can integrate the expression. So, performing the integration it turns out that phi is equal to observed into the density of the catalyst multiplied by r square divided by 2 times the corresponding effective diffusivity d e a into 1 plus k 3 c a s divided by k 3 minus 2 k 2 into 1 minus 1 plus 2 k 2 c a s divided by c a 3 into k 3 minus 2 k 2 multiplied by logarithm of 1 plus k 3 c a s divided by 1 plus 2 k 2 c a s inverse of this. So, that is the expression for the modified generalized criterion phi that is equal to eta internal effectiveness factor multiplied by the corresponding Thiele modulus multiplied by phi square. So, now the same uh, experimental group Austin and Walker's group they have also while performing these experiments they estimated that K2 which is the adsorption constant for carbon monoxide is given by 4.15 into 10 to the power of 9 centimeter cube per mole. Similarly, K3 was also estimated as 3.38 into 10 to the power of 5 centimeter cube per mole. So, plugging in these numbers we can find that the generalized phi which is equal to eta times phi square which is the parameter in the generalized criterion that should be equal to 2.5 which is certainly greater than 1. So, clearly the generalized model generalized criterion suggests that there is strong internal strong internal diffusional limitations strong internal diffusion limitations in fact that's what was observed experimentally so that was what was the experimental observation as well so therefore in order to find out whether there is internal diffusional limitation or not you, depending upon what is the nature of the rate law, a simple y spreader criterion can be used if it is a simple nth order reaction, but if it is uh, uh, the rate law is not as simple as that then one has to use these generalized criterion phi which is given by earlier uh, expression that we just derived where one needs to find out what is integrate the expression of the diffusivity multiplied by the uh, rate uh, going from the concentration of the species at the center of the pellet if it is if it is infinitely long uh, all the way up to the uh, concentration of the species at the surface of the catalyst.